So AI has gotten a lot of attention over the last couple of months because it went from something that might be neat in a couple of years to insane real quick. Tons of people are popping off with chat GPT and almost overnight, AI art became this and everyone has access to it. So I wanna do a video just kind of breaking down, having fun and experimenting with this because it really interests me and it's 100% the future. Now this isn't going to be some kind of crazy, in-depth, super knowledgeable guide, but I think it's actually going to help out everyone that maybe is trying to get their footing with understanding how AI art works and building prompts and stuff, because it was kind of the natural progression I took, and I got some really cool stuff at the end of it. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and comment down below. Now, my audience is mainly Pokemon fans, so before I lose that audience retention, here's something that, like, I instantly made on the first prompt. It was, like, Ken Sugimori Pokemon-style wolf. And that's just, like, a little bit of what's possible, and that's without any refinement. So I wanted to start with how I got here making things, and there's two main platforms right now. We have Stable Diffusion, and we have Mid Journey. Mid Journey initially came off as weird to me, because I'm like, it's a Discord bot, and just kind of, like, running prompts through it. Like, okay... But Stable Diffusion has like its own system going on, and I actually started off with Art Room. I wanted to see what local things I could do, and it was fairly limited, but I kind of made some interesting things. Not this, uh, this. So I was like, oh, I can use local Art Room to start making some Bob Ross kind of pictures. That's pretty neat, so I made a couple of those. But then when it came to actually developing characters, what I saw people making with Mid Journey was just way better. And Mid Journey ended up being like a lot easier to just kind of follow through because their system is so good with how you use prompts, you press some buttons, it remakes them, it upscales them, and then you can get like multiple things of the same image. So that ended up working out pretty well and I was able to kind of develop off of that. And I do need to say that this is not sponsored. I wish it was sponsored because I could be making bank because they're making bank. I joined the Discord and there's 900,000 people online. The secret is out, but it's also still kind of a secret. And it's still like you don't just pop in and you start instantly making this kind of stuff. There's a lot of people asking for help. There's a lot of people kind of getting stuck. So now is like a really interesting time to get in on it and start learning and understanding. And it's only going to get better from here. Like that's the crazy part. So then I wanted to see what I could do, what I could make. And my idea was just kind of take what I already have and see if I could, I could make more art of my persona. And the challenge was to make something that I was happy with that could compete with an artist commission because AI makes some janky kind of things. That's also kind of a meme around AI art, but I wanted to see how far I could push it. So after kind of like scrolling through, I found this image and it's really cool. So I just ripped the prompt. A detailed black cat in a hoodie listening to music with headphones, detailed shiny eyes, wrap graffiti cover, illustration style, 4K black graffiti background. And that's really cool. So I was like, hey, what happens if we plug this into that? And I'm going to give you guys a fair warning. So AI makes some jank stuff. It can get creepy. Meet Creepy Pasta Verlis in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, yeah, the eyes kind of scary. Everything else though, almost perfect. Insultingly, almost perfect. And that actually got me thinking because there's a lot of drama going on with AI art and artists and people getting upset at that. But when I saw this, I, real I realized that if you're an artist, you 100% need to be embracing AI art right now. One, because the future is inevitable at this point. But also, if you can actually make something that works with AI art or fixes AI art, you're going to stay in business longer and you can actually build off of that. So taking something like this, if it only cost me five bucks to have the eyes quickly fixed and also like all the little red speckles because it didn't know what to do with my markings or something, and then a little bit of extra like touch up. Yeah, if you can do that in 15 minutes, do four or five of those an hour, you're above that $15 minimum wage that the leftists are always crying about and you're doing pretty all right. And like I said, this is crazy popular right now. So tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people every day are getting jank art that they're like, oh, I can't it get perfect. Oh, it's just halfway there. And then they have to post something that has six fingers or wonky eyes or weird anatomy and stuff. So if you can actually fix that, yeah, someone will be like, yo, five bucks to like make the image that's almost perfect, perfect. I'll take that. And you could just 
do that all day long and stay in business and make a good living. Now, I did a full video about that topic on my second channel, Verlisify's Hot Takes. If you want the full salty deep dive, you can check it out over there. That's not what this video is about. This video is talking about my journey to making a profile picture or actually getting like satisfying persona art out of the current state of AI as it only goes better and better. Also, I took that prompt and it's not a black cat in a hoodie. I just made it a wolf and then gave it the base image to work off of. And then it got close. And then it got something that's also cool. But then again, the eyes were kind of jank. And that's when like you kind of have to lean into the weirdness and shenanigans about how all of this stuff works. So what I did was I just generated eyes. And then I got a set that actually looked pretty cool. So we take that, we slap it on to the art I was already using. It's like, yeah, that's uncanny. That's kind of weird. But that actually gives the AI something better to work with because that's what I want to see in the final product. So this becomes noise and then spits out a better image. And then to increase my chances of success, I Photoshop the image that I really wanted. Like, I'm ready to pay some kind of clothing designer $100 to make me that hoodie because I really like that the collar wraps around and then, like, it's all this AI jank. And AI doesn't know what a hoodie is or how to make all that work together. It actually, like, looks like a cool anime stylization. I like that the hoodie part kind of rests inside the collar and it just has, like, the right thing. Like, that is me. That is my character minus the jank. So I Photoshopped in the eyes. It looks weird but it's going to give me a result closer to what I'm looking for. And that also goes back to the whole artist thing, that I think there's also a lot of room for business for artists to make reference sheets that work with AI really well. In theory, it kind of hurts your business because why would I sell a $25 simple reference when I could be selling the full-on art for $80 or $100? but the little bit of business for a reference is better than no business because no one's going to pay $80 when it costs $30 a month to get an unlimited amount of images. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It was hours of like refining and prompting. And really, I just call it fishing. You put the idea out there. You maybe tweak it a little bit if it starts going a little too wrong. And then you're just nonstop generating. You're fishing until something really good comes out. I tried like some anime styles, but that really wasn't going for it came out with some like weird creepy stuff as well some other things that were close but not quite and you just kind of get closer to it and then yo that's that's awesome that's almost it but then like a little bit of jank happened the ai couldn't tell the difference between the right ear and the hoodie so it just turned my right ear into the hoodie and the rest of it's perfect it's just so insulting but then you gotta think about where this is going to be a year from now or even longer than then, and it might just get it right, or it's going to be able to kind of take this and just say, hey, fix ear, and then maybe like draw an area. Maybe you can kind of do things like that. I'm st This is my first day. This is me screwing around day one, trying out some like strategies and ideas and some basic Photoshop with the core image I have to like make unique personalized concept art, and we're getting really close. And that's kind of another crazy element to this, that I'm trying to make a specific character that has personal connections to me instead of making like, oh man, maybe it spits out like a really cool looking anime girl or some kind of sci-fi character or something really awesome like that. But since I'm trying to like capture the essence of my persona, it, I, it has to be a bit more personal, but it still got really close. So even with high standards, we almost got it. And then we almost got it again. So I ran this one back through and I was like, please fix the ear. And I even like took like part of the ear and I photoshopped it on the side and I tried to get it. And then the end result was, oh, I heard you wanted more ears. Let's just give you half of a deformed little ear. And then it just kind of fell apart. And I think this could actually work. Like furry clothing is weird and ambiguous and doesn't really have too many set rules. So it's like technically the ears could just be under the hoodie and I could like photoshop that out and just make it look like a hoodie. And that's kind of cool. But it, the first like the image on the left is just so good so i wanted to try to capture that and then i made what is kind of the best image but also kind of not the best image that's awesome that's cool if this is just what you're going for some kind of cyberpunk background with a cool looking wolf in a hoodie that nailed it once again like it, it hit everything and it doesn't look too uncanny and it looks like an artist made that 
Problem is, it starts getting generic at that point, so this is why it just took me hours and hours and testing and figuring it out. That's also why this isn't a direct guide, because I don't know all the tips and tricks and hacks and crazy things, but it's my own personal journey through mid-journey, and I'm still getting some very satisfying results. Like, that's awesome, but it's not me. Anyone that's followed my channel for a while or is familiar with my persona, that's me. That captures the persona, that captures my personality, and that's another crazy thing about AI art. It shouldn't do that. That's one of the things that artists are complaining about, like, oh, you can't get that human element out of it. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, an artist can tell. But if I get something personal to me that makes me feel good, art is subjective. That's all that matters about it. And if I don't need an artist to get me there, we're doing just fine. But what happened was we went from this to this to this and then this and then we tried to take it a step further and then the identity got lost. Also you can see like the fur starts getting less detailed and more smudgy and blurry because yeah, like the fur, those details are already becoming a part of the noise and then just kind of getting mixed back into everything. So it does kind of get fuzzy in that way. And I was like, all right, we're close. We've almost got it. We gotta just keep trying again. We gotta go back to fishing. And then it worked. That without any touching up is better than half of the commissions I've paid money for. And that's kind of like another thing with anyone that has experience with like commissioning characters or anime characters or also people in the furry community. You know, you get your art and then you have like the dopamine, you have the adrenaline, like, you're like, oh man, I've been waiting for so long. This piece is finished. It's really cool. It's really awesome. And then you sit on it for a few days and you're looking at it and you're like, well, that, that kind of looks weird and that detail is not that great. And, and you feel like you got a deal already. So you don't want to bother the artist and send it back and be like, well, you know, can you can you fix that? So then like politeness comes into play and you get something that's going to be kind of flawed anyways. And that's like another going back to the weird argument about artists being upset. The whole thing about being human is being flawed. Yet the human artists have been mocking and berating AI and trying to say like, oh, it'll never be there. It's not going to be as good as what humans can make, even though humans are flawed. They're not going to be perfect artists. I mean, I guess if you get like hundreds of dollars and like the highest end, most professional commissions, there's going to be very little, if any, flaws. But that's not going to be most art, especially from all these starving artists that are complaining about it that are really only scared that they're about to be out of a job and a very expensive degree. So when you get something like this, it's that's good enough for me. Like I said, that's passable. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Like that is almost a finished piece of art. It captures the personalization I'm looking for. And if you thought it came from this image, it didn't. It came from the simpler image as well. So going back to the whole like artist perfect, like that's another thing, like if you're an artist, then you want to work on making generic concept art and then using Mid Journey, paying for the subscription, feeding the beast to then see what you can generate from that and then tune your concept art to actually work better for the prompts and then you can commission that out and that's how you're going to succeed so yeah like that turned into that and that was after me doing some photoshop and some jankiness but i eventually just gave the ai what it wanted and it gave me something i wanted in return and this is just the beginning it's day one for me and it's newborn for the ai so I think it's going to be some pretty cool stuff, and that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to share my experience, my fascination with AI, my belief that it's going to be the future, because it's it's just awe-inspiring. Like, you look at what people are making, and now anyone can make this. It's also, like, a lot of the scenery, a lot of the buildings, a lot of towns. I don't really care too much for, like, the portraits and stuff, and people are still making some really interesting things. But this kind of stuff, this is dope. This is a dream. And you can just have it be made for you on demand you can get some kind of fantasy inspirational piece instantly just like that and that's like the really cool thing so i investigate further i'm like can i hyper personalize this because the ai is going to be more familiar with portraits and fantasy and like really cool buildings and these kind of concepts than they are with my persona and we still got a furry out of it let's go so if you enjoyed the video or have helped out in any way please share this video the youtube algorithm gets more and more unforgiving with each passing day and as a viewer you have to go above and beyond and out of your way to kind of get the algorithm to serve you the content you want to see but also promote content that you think deserves being promoted 
if you think that about my content in this video and my journey, then yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It's kind of nice to kind of see like all of this come together for the future and all the cool things that are happening over here. And I'm, I'm excited. And if you are too, then we're all just having fun. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.